chain gang. Hey, nothing but love and respect. You might have some cool fans, but mine are the best. We've been through it all, went to war when duty called, never left a man behind, we move as one is. Oklahoma weather can dish out some of the worst punishment in the world. Hi everyone, I'm meteorologist Aaron Tuttle. But now you can fight back by installing Class 4 impact resistant shingles from Ferguson Roof Systems. These shingles can withstand large hail, heavy rain, and hurricane force winds, all while keeping your home safe and dry. And the best part, this upgrade is completely free for many homeowners. So call today to start reaping the benefits these Class 4 shingles bring including a discount on home insurance, only at fergusonroofsystems.com. Hey there, meteorologist Aaron Tuttle back with you again. This is gonna be just a uh, forecast update for this point in time. <clears throat> we'll watch kind of things off and on down there in Southwest Oklahoma, but at least give you an update on when all that activity will arrive. So we're gonna talk more about that. Um, and then we'll probably end up doing like a cut in a little bit later on as those storms get closer to central Oklahoma, it might become a little bit more severe. Um, so we'll kind of keep track on all that stuff for you. So thanks for joining me. Uh, we're getting to the forecast here in just a second. So make sure you like, follow, share this page with all your friends and family, for example. And also, let me go ahead and get into this position again. I'm gonna keep hitting this for that way. Um, you will always have this at your fingertips. I will post the link to where you can get a, a, a Facebook message directly from me whenever I do go live. Now that's because you don't always get notified when I do go live through Facebook, so this will help you out with that. So I'm going to post a link now. If you haven't done it and you need help on that, click that um, link right there. And then make sure you manage messages once the uh, message pops up on your Facebook um, phone or your computer. Alright, so that's done. Let's move on now to the model data and what is currently um, expected here for tonight. Okay, so National Weather Service, we still have the uh, risk of severe weather this evening, so that has not changed. This goes until the early dawn hours for tomorrow. Uh, we still have the risk of a tornado tonight. Now, this isn't more of the supercell variety as it is more of the QLCS or squall line type, meaning they're fast, transient, small, short-lived, um, usually weaker. So that's kind of what we have mainly for tonight. And that does include the Oklahoma City metro area, pretty much the I-35 corridor and points west. Once it gets east from that, I think things will, will improve a little bit. Timing, of course, is already occurring out in western Oklahoma this uh, evening. But then the next round is already moving in from the southwest from Texas. And that'll be coming on into central Oklahoma as we head closer to the midnight hour. Tulsa, you are still expected to see a little bit of rain uh, fall, of course, tonight and tomorrow morning. Uh, and also, there's a slight risk of severe weather for you guys, but the storms should be, let's see, massively diminished in intensity by the time it gets to Tulsa. Here's a look at your timeline for tomorrow. So midnight, um, I, say, I say tomorrow, it'll feel like tomorrow by the time it moves through, but it'll be from midnight to about 3 o'clock in the morning up into Tulsa, then from 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. from Tulsa points to the east. Uh, then from 6 to 9 a.m. once it gets into Arkansas. And you do have more storms tomorrow afternoon and evening as well across far eastern Oklahoma and Arkansas. And some of those might be severe, so keep that in mind. Here's a look at how the um, surface map looks. We've had our return of moisture into the 60s for dew point values here across Oklahoma. So the moisture is there, but it's a little bit more um, shallower versus very deep. Um, but it's there, and it will continue to pile in, so that will allow the severe weather threat to continue. Storms have erupted across the nation here in the midsection all the way down through Nebraska, Kansas, and into northwestern Texas. And it's this little batch right here that's going to give us some headaches here for the remainder of tonight. This activity in northwest Oklahoma will be moving its way into Kansas for the rest of tonight, giving those folks a headache with basically a lot of lightning, some um, 
brief heavy rainfall along with some hail and some damaging wind potential. Okay, so let's go into the data as far as time of arrival and bring you up to speed there. Okay, so uh, this model just came in, so I actually hadn't even looked at it myself, uh, but let's see what it does. Let's see if it even forecasted the uh, event so far for the evening. Sometimes they don't even do that very well. But it does have those storms up in northwest Oklahoma at 8 o'clock. What did it do with them? Oh, it's already out to lunch. <laughs> Silly model. Tricks are for kids. Anyway, at least finally had the right idea that that, that cluster did move up to the north um, into northern Oklahoma and Kansas, but it, it just did not paint it well. Uh, what it did, though, let me back up here, is at least get this stuff in southwest Oklahoma. So we're going to have to ignore, ignore this. This isn't happening. This isn't reality. This is reality here. Um, probably because the cap was stronger than it had initiated, and so the storms didn't really go too well. Uh, these are going down here, though, and they should move in this direction. So this is at 11 o'clock. Let's go to midnight. And this is actually a little slow, so I'm going to have to just completely throw this model out now and think about it for timing. So let me see if I like the overall look, which is a squall line that moves through. I like that look through eastern Oklahoma with weakening as it gets closer to Tulsa and the rest of the body of the state. And then some more stuff there Tuesday, uh, excuse me, Wednesday afternoon. There's 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock. So you guys in eastern Oklahoma get a couple of rounds of showers and storms out of this. And we'll get some wraparound for Wednesday evening. There's 8 o'clock. Um, so it's a little bit of rainfall moving through Oklahoma City Wednesday evening on into Thursday morning for northeastern and eastern Oklahoma. So that's kind of the progress of how the timeline of the rain will look in general. Now as far as a more accurate representation of what's happening tonight, we'll go to the high-res model, which you know is the best of the best so we'll see how good it does and then we'll get the timeline here better for you okay so it's got the cluster up to the north the cluster up to the south hey at least it knows what's happening <laughs> it's a small victory right all right so let's move this with time uh whoa get back over here uh, all right so that moves up into kansas we talked about there's that stuff in southwest oklahoma 10 o'clock tonight that quickly expands northward and eastward. So there's 11 o'clock, so just approaching Lawton, probably back out to Clinton and Weatherford. And then as we head into the midnight hour, that's approaching on the west side of Oklahoma City. So this timing, I do like this configuration I like. And if you do notice, you get kind of this bow structure element. Well, that's typically a damaging wind type um, scenario. The pockets of damaging wind within that little bow echo region. Also though, we do have these little indention areas here. So another indication will probably deal with some of these little QLCS type spin-ups that'll kind of sneak in there um, on the leading edge for a couple of tornado type deals. And then there's Oklahoma City at two o'clock in the morning. So just heavy rain, showers and storms. So it'll probably wake you up. And then there's three o'clock in the morning. There's four. You notice it's been weakening here with time as it hits into Tulsa and then points southward. So it's still a pretty good squall line as far as rainfall goes and probably a little bit of lightning but uh, as far as the severity of it it's just greatly diminished there's 10 o'clock in the morning it's still all in eastern oklahoma so it's a slow mover overnight uh, into eastern oklahoma and that will continue into the afternoon with that secondary round as we talked about developing here by two o'clock uh, and you could get a little bit of severe weather in far eastern and southeast oklahoma tomorrow afternoon midday uh, with some of these storms just because it shears a little better but other than that, the instability is a lot lower because of the morning round. So, but needless to say, that's kind of how the things ought to plan out. So that's how you should time thing time things here for tonight. Uh, I could get. Uh, I'm trying to figure out what's important to show you. Let's just show you the forecast, though extended as far as temperatures are concerned. We're looking at 60s over the next uh, few days, and then some 50s here later for November 2nd, 3rd, and 4th. And again, as we talked about, these numbers have been going up and down in the extended outlook because this model data is not quite certain. But we do see some 30s sneaking in there, and occasionally the model's been throwing in some snow across the state. So that's kind of how the extended um, atmosphere looks across Oklahoma. In general, this is just for Oklahoma City. Uh, as far as the rainfall or storms are concerned out there right now, just a quick look shows these elements continue down here in the southwest Oklahoma from Magnum to Altus to Frederick to Vernon. So some good strong thunderstorms here, pockets of some wind and some hail. If you notice this little fine blue line right here that's already come out, this is an outflow boundary, which means this line's already weakened. A lot of its structure is already pressed out ahead of it. So this line now has to catch back up with the line, with the outflow banner, to regain its magnitude of severity. Um, of severity. So that's the reason why some of the winds and some of the um, 
nasty. So the nasty has been in Texas, but is not occurring currently in Oklahoma. There will be pockets of some wind and, and hail, though, with this line as it materializes and develops. And I'm looking um, for little QLCS type um, spin ups on the leading edge and I don't see anything right now, but this is where we'd be watching just for something to happen. But otherwise, it's nothing too serious. It's a, a standard, typical thunderstorm event here for southwest Oklahoma, and that will continue to expand northward in this blue box, which is a severe thunderstorm watch, which just comes in to the southwest side of Oklahoma City metropolitan area. Doesn't include Oklahoma City, but at least it kind of gets into the ballpark of where we are. And again, up here in northwest Oklahoma, radar map there shows same kind of idea. These storms are kind of rolling on out into Kansas. The strongest part of the storm is around Winoka, and it's got some hail with that around the west side of town, up to about an inch in diameter. Uh, wind speeds on this, has it changed any since the last time I take a look? Uh, still got pockets here of winds. It could be in excess of 70 miles per hour, right along 281 and the county line south of Winoka. Uh, but that'll continue to work its way toward Abert and Alva and Burlington as it works its way into Kansas. So that is the latest look um, in that aspect. Rainfall amounts, I did not discuss that. We can go ahead and do that as well. So let me go back to this chart here and show you what the accumulated rainfall amounts will be. And we're looking at about an inch or so in some of these heavier thunderstorms as they roll through from the Lawton area. That's up to two inches there. Tulsa is also close to two inches because they slow down a little bit here in eastern Oklahoma and you get the wrap around for more rain tomorrow. So you're gonna have higher totals there anyway. Uh, it's a good rain in Kansas, and not, of course, not a whole lot out here in western Oklahoma, especially this little dry slotted area here where the storms didn't manage to, you know, <laughs> cover everybody uh, in that region. Okay, um, what about pockets of wind? Uh, we can take a look, see if anything of that has changed in the da Lewis data. All right, so we do have these little brown areas. Let's go to 10 o'clock. There's 11 o'clock. It just shows what potential is there in the atmosphere, so up around 70 miles per hour. And we've seen that already, so that kind of jives with some of what the Doppler radar has estimated earlier this evening. Um, 70 to 77. And these are, of course, it won't know the exact spot. It just knows there will be pockets of some damaging wind. But if you notice at 2 o'clock in the morning, this was moved in the east of the metro um, and going through the metro, there really wasn't as strong of a signal at that point. There's 1 o'clock in the morning, there's midnight. So the storms really lose their punch after midnight once they get to the I-35 corridor. If you mentioned our prior forecast discussions, we talked about the theta E axis and how they'd be working their way out of that favored zone. And the winds will actually probably pick up tomorrow stronger intensity just in general terms. So there's uh, Wednesday at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. There's wind speeds all over the place of 40 plus miles per hour sustained um, more than likely in uh, parts of western Oklahoma, the panhandles and stuff. So. It'll be a little windy behind this system as everything kind of shifts on off to the north and east. And I believe that's probably all I want to show you. Temperature-wise, uh, oh, you know what? There was something I want to show you because I did catch this. So we'll look at temperatures here real quick to kind of give you an idea. We're in the 70s now, um, 60s tonight, and then tomorrow morning into the afternoon, we cool down to the 50s. That's pretty chilly, right? Clouds around, so a few showers. So a little chilly here in central Oklahoma. but. Check this out, I'm gonna show you the dew point values. The dew point values are a measure of moisture in the atmosphere. So we got a lot of moisture here, of course outside now, it's in the 60s. Uh, as we head through time, look at this big wave out to the west of kind of a brownish yellow color. These are dew point values in the 20s and teens um, <laughs> and 30s, that is dry. That's when you step outside and you instantly chafe <laughs> and your skin goes, what happened? I was nice, uh, moist and supple and smooth, and now I look like a piece of sandpaper that's gone over some wood. So that'll happen out here in far western Oklahoma in the panhandle of uh, Texas and Oklahoma for your Wednesday afternoon. Whereas we've got just enough humidity to make us feel pretty decent and cool here in the rest of central Oklahoma, and of course still pretty humid out to the east. All right, that's about the it for me as far as what you can expect here for tonight. Uh, this is standard stuff, a little bit of wind, a little bit of hail. There's no strong indications that we're going to have a repeat of just a, you know, a slam dunk fest over the Oklahoma City Metro. This is not that type of a setup that we've seen before. Uh, this is different. This is lighter on that magnitude. Doesn't mean that something freaky can't happen, but as far as the data is concerned, it's not a similar setup as last time. But we do have to watch out though for those little baby 
tornadoes, little QLCS ones, and those will be hard to pinpoint, they'll be hard to find, hard to see, hard to predict, hard to warn for, because they usually are very tiny. A lot of times the radar won't see them very well, and they only last for a minute or two, and then they're gone. So it's like a whack game of whack-a-mole, and we play that here <laughs> on live coverage, so we'll try to find them for you. And alert you as best we can. Make sure you use my weather app, AT's Weather to Go. It'll pick up some of those as well, as long as the radar can indicate good coverage for them uh, and give you uh, plenty of time to seek shelter as best as you can. Uh, and overnight, you know, you're gonna need any minute you can because most of you are probably asleep or pretty groggy by the time these storms do roll in around midnight or so uh, in central Oklahoma. Okay, well, that's it for me. I'll be doing another live update here later on as conditions warrant. Again, I'll be doing coverage for tornadoes unless there's some more of a serious event such as straight line winds around 80 or 90 miles per hour or something like that, okay? All right, otherwise, sleep well, sleep tight. Make sure you have no weather radio turned on, weather apps. Um, have a game plan in place in case you need to seek shelter at the last minute notice. And uh, we'll talk with you soon. Take care.